Uh, hi, my name is Luis Berrocal, and I'll be talking to you about uh, how to create a least cost path route using ArcGIS 10. You can follow me at Twitter at uh, Luis C. Berrocal, and my blog is tecnofuentabierta.blogspot.com. Now let's start seeing what we're going to do today. Now, uh, the requirements for this tutorial are going to be needing ArcGIS 10 uh, with Arc Editor, though I'm pretty sure you can do it with ArcView. You're going to need uh, the spatial analyst extension. Uh, it must be activated in order to run the, the tutorial. Now, what we're going to analyze today, the problem is we want to find an alternate route to build a road between origin, which is in a town called Cerro Pelado, and the destination, uh, which is in a town called Chumicoso. The criteria we're going to use is a slope. Uh, we're going to consider that higher slopes are more costly than lower slopes. And we're going to use uh, land use. We're going to consider uh, intervened uh, land uses more less costly than intervened areas. For example, farmlands will be less costly than forests. Well, now uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to open our map document. The name of our map document is least underscore cost path tutorial. Now let's see what, what we have inside in this um, in this MXD. We have the origin points, which it's taking a little time to show. Our origin point, which is this black circle here, uh, Cerro Pelado. We have our destination, which is here, Chumicoso. Uh, we also have the towns. Uh, we have the rivers we have now activated. Uh, we have the streets. We have uh, the district of San Felix, which is this uh, kind of pink uh, borderline. Uh, we have the districts, which are in yellow, our study area. We have the land use, we, are, we, have, we do not have activated, and our DEM. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a toolbox in order to, to have our model separate from, from the other toolboxes. Now, we're going to say add toolbox. Um, we're going to create a new toolbox. We're going to call it underscore least cost, least underscore cost. And we're going to give it an enter. We're going to select it and we're going to open it. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to add, we're going to, I'm sorry, we're going to add a new model. We're going to enter here into model properties. We're going to change the name and the label. We're going to call it uh, least cost path route. This name cannot contain uh, blank spaces. And here we're going to put the label. We're going to call it uh, least cost path route. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to check that the environment variables uh, are set to the values we want. We're going to make sure that the workspace is properly is properly set. Uh, we're also going to check uh, the process extent, and we also want to check the raster analysis. Now, we're going to click here to see the values we currently have. For workspace, we want to check that it's pointing current workspace. It's pointing to San Felix uh, GDB, and our scratch workspace is scratch underscore San Felix GDB. Our processing extent, we want it to be snapped to our DEM, which is a 90 meter resolution uh, DEM, and our, we want to make sure that our raster analysis, the cell size, is set to 90, which is the size of the DEM. Uh, data and we're going to set here to OK. We're going to do apply and we're going to do OK. Now as soon as we, we save the model we'll see that the name changes here. Now we're going to start uh, uh, adding the models, uh, the, the tools that we're going to require for this model. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, calculate the slope. For that we go here to surface. Uh, we select slope and we drag and drop it into the into the model. 
um, we double click on slope and we're going to select as our input raster, raster uh, the DM. Now we check that it's uh, the output is in our scratch workspace. We're going to keep degrees and we're going to keep the Z factor as one and do apply. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this into something a little bit more clear and meaningful. We're going to type here DM slope. Now we're going to run the tool so when we reclassify uh, our data we will have actual data to, to reclassify. We're going to select uh, the reclassify tool and drop it here. I'm going to double click it on it. We're going to select, select as our input raster or DEM slope. The reclass value is value and we're going to classify it uh, a little bit different. We're going to select the quantile and we're going to select 10 classes instead of 5. We're going to click on OK and as you can see uh, the old values, the range of, of old values, uh, the smaller they are, the smaller the cost will be, which is consistent what we, with what we want. We're going to do apply here. We're going to do OK. And we're also going to rename this, this output. Type here reclass slope. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our, our weight overlay tool. We we'll double click on it, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the evaluation scale. We're going to type here in from one to ten in steps of one. We're going to do apply. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our first uh, input layer, which would be our slope DEM. Our reclassify our reclass slope. Our input field is value. We need to do OK here. And as you can see, our field values will match with our scale values, uh, which is pretty much what we want. Since we only have one, the current influence is 100%. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add our um, land use. And we're going to select this input uh, category. And we're going to do here OK. And we're going to start uh, assigning values based on intervention. We're going to do for farmland, we're going to assign the 3. For shrubs, uh, 2. For subsistence uh, farming, we're going to use 3 also. For forest uh, with intervention, we're going to use 8. Uh, mature forest, we're going to use 10. We're going to keep that uh, as most as we keep as small as uh, uh, we're going to protect our mature forest the best way we can. Uh, our mangroves, we're going to use uh, 9. For water, 10 because it's very expensive to build bridges. Wetland vegetations, we're going to use 8. Uh, other users, we're going to use three. And no data will, will keep on being no data. Now, we're going to assign our weights. We're going to give this one a 34% weight. And we're going to assign to our slog our 60, 66 weight. As you can see, the the warning disappeared because now it adds up uh, to 100. We're going to do apply. OK. And we're going to do a little bit uh, full extent. And we're going to lay out the layout in order to see uh, what we have. OK. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to rename this. And we're going to name this costs.
Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to estimate, we're going to calculate uh, the cost for moving uh, from any sale to our destination. And for that we're going to use the tool cost distance. We're going to drag and drop it here. I'm going to do a little bit of zoom so we can see a little bit better what we're working with. Move it a little bit here. And we can double click on cost distance and our input or feature source data will be our destination. Our input cost raster is going to be the cost we just cal just calculated. We're going to leave blank maximum distance so we'll use uh, all, all the data in the set. Now we want to calculate the backlink which is the directions and we're going to name it uh, Test back link. Save. Click on apply and do OK. And now we are going to on the layout and the panel over here to see what we have. We're going to rename our outputs and call this. Now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to calculate our least cost path using the outputs from uh, cost distance. For that we're going to use cost path. I'm going to drag and drop it here. We're going to do a little bit of panning here. And we're going to double click on cost path and we're going to select as our feature destination data. We're going to select origin. And select as a destination field object ID. Since there's only one point, this is not really important. Uh, as input cost uh, raster, we're going to select output cost distance. Our backlink, we're going to do output back, we're going to select output backlink. Yeah. We're going to keep uh, path type uh, each cell. We're going to do apply. Okay, I'm going to do an auto layout again, move over here, and we're going to rename our final output to least cost path. Well now we're run, ready to run our model. Went to full extent, so we'll see how it works. We're going to click over cost path and right click, and we're going to do run. And you can see as the different tools turn to red, means they're, they're processing the data. Now that it's finished, we're going to close this. We're going to right click on least cost path. And we're going to click on add to display so we can see a result. Close the model. Make sure that it's up here so we can see. Move it here. And here we can see our suggested a new route from Cerro Pelado to Chumicoso. Uh, it's the screen uh, data. Uh, well, that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and uh, that's all.